Hello and welcome to a brand new dawn of racing in the Basque Country. It's the inaugural Donosti. 127 kilometers. Here's the profile for the riders today. We'll be uh, gripping the coast and working our way over four categorized descents for a total of uh, 127 kilometers. The final climb, rated category two. We're going up the uh, Jaiskibel, which is famous from the men's edition of the San Sebastian Classic. But I tell you what, that Murgil Tontora at the back end is short and a very sharp shock which is going to play a major role in the destination of honours in this inaugural edition of this uh, this wonderful event. The uh, riders presented to the crowd and sent on their way via some uh, interesting local dancing. On, and we've got some of the best riders in the world, including the world time trial champion, Annemiek van Vluten, and Ashley mulman Passio, the South African road champion, who's been in fine form, taking a victory already this week. This is uh, the third event in a three-race triptych of uh, great uh, top UCI women's bike racing. These pictures from the start line. Olga Zablinskaya among those riders on the front. The uh, Russian veteran, a little bit anxious, ahead of what is going to be a tough day out for the riders. And here's what's uh, happening out on the road as we pick up uh, pictures from the course. And I can tell you that it's uh, Eugenia Buyak who's gone clear of the field uh, and, uh, with an advantage of, she's got a breakaway partner, an advantage of just uh, under half a minute with Peloton uh, back at two and a half minutes remove. It's all being controlled nicely. This is the second chase group, and it's got some of the heavy hitters in there. Mitchell and Scott have come with a very strong team. I mentioned Annemiek van Vluten, the uh, world time trial champion, who's taken a string of top victories, including, including of course, a uh, victory in the uh, the top uh, women's stage race of the year, Giro Rosa of late. And uh, Amanda Spratt is in there, Jess Allen. Uh, Lucy Kennedy, Georgia Williams, and Alex Manley, also part of the uh, Mitchell and Scott lineup. CCC Liv will look to do battle with them with uh, Ashley Moolman Passio, as I've mentioned, accompanied by four strong teammates. Up and across another one of these tough climbs that are really testing and challenging the riders uh, today. We've had some, a lot of uh, significant attacks coming, for, particularly from the BTC City Ljubljana squad. Eugenia Buyak has been up the road, so too Spella Kern, one of the early attackers, and clearly they've come with an aggressive intent. But the selection behind, the chase group behind, we're just trying to pick out some names and numbers for you. It includes the uh, Spanish champion, Oya Bida, who's also been up the road of late, and some of the uh, heavy hitters from the Michelin Scott squad, in the sense that this is certainly putting it up to the, the main peloton behind, and you're wondering whether they're going to be able to get back involved with uh, just a smidgen over 26 miles of racing, or make that 41 kilometers in uh, the parlance of cycling. The penultimate climb of the day, the, the pace has been relatively steady to this point, which promises, I think, a very exciting and busy back end. And this is going to be interesting, isn't it, as the uh, riders behind are starting to get a little bit anxious about the, the gap. I'm joined, I'm glad to say, uh, by uh, Danny Rowe alongside me to run the rule over the riders uh, throughout uh, the afternoon. And for the conclusion of this event, we'll hear from uh, Danny very shortly. But, uh, as the riders work their way down into the final 40 kilometers of racing, Movistar team want to try and get organized. The inaugural edition of the Donostia Classica, Classicoa, and the climbs out on the road are particularly grippy, particularly challenging. It's going to be very tough. Chiara Perini is in there for the B Pink squad, and she's got for company Eugenia Buyak with just over half a minute advantage to the peloton, or at least the first group of chasers. And look at the way this is causing all sorts of pain and suffering. 18% in parts on this uh, particular penultimate climb of four climbs today in the Donostia San Sebastian Classico. I mentioned uh, Danny Rose alongside me. Danny, it's great to see such great quality bike racing. Another fantastic new bike race that's in addition to the, uh, to the Women's World Calendar.
it's great now that the women have got the opportunity to race in such a prestigious bike race. The men have had this race for years and now for the women to be able to, to race it is fantastic. And you can see just how hard this race is. Um, that's Lucy Kennedy now on the front for Mitchelton Scott, putting the hammer down in this chase group behind. She's an absolutely fantastic climber. She had a brilliant Giro and a heartbreak end to one of the stages where Lucy Kennedy was away and she actually put her arms up thinking that she'd won the stage and Mariana Voss came from nowhere behind to pip her just on the line. And you can see Bujak now as well, um, really putting the hammer down on this climb. She wants to get over the top, so she's got that room to, that wiggle room for the pure climbers to come from behind. She's also a fantastic bike rider. She's won um, the Plouet World Cup race before. So yeah, again, a really good chance for Bujak to try and go all the way here. And CCC liver straight onto this move. They will be riding for Ashley Mormon Passio today. She won the last hilly stage of the three races here in the Basque Country in fine form. Um, and a perfect race for her. She's an out and out climber. And again, it's something that's really nice. There's a lack of sort of the mountainous races for the women throughout um, the World Tour races or, you know, races in general. So it's nice for these women to be able to really showcase their climbing abilities um, in a race like today. Bouillac's doing a pretty solid job of showcasing her ability. She's distanced her uh, breakaway companion. Chiara Perini has been uh, delayed somewhat on the on the climb. It's a grippy one, isn't it? The Mendezorots is the sec uh, third of uh, four climbs on the day. 4.1 kilometers in length. It too gets uh, category two status, but tell you what, it's it's a really tough climb out there for these uh, for these riders. The only the uh, Yashkabel gets the category one status. We've been up over the Arcale, the uh, third cat climb. And uh, now the Mendezorots at uh, over four kilometers at an average of 7.3%, 19% at its maximum point. This is an, a particularly difficult climb for Lucy Kennedy. She's been given an opportunity and she's overhauled now uh, Chiara Pirini and racing across this gap. And I would be interested to know exactly what the gap is right now because, uh, well, Lucy Kennedy's on the charge. She's got uh, Ensing for company. And this uh, indeed looks like Roy Ackers, who's the probably the st strongest lieutenant for Ashley Mulvan Passio. She's been given her opportunity as well. It uh, serves as a tactical play and ploy by Ashley Mulvan Passio and indeed by Annemiek van Vluten and in turn uh, looks uh, gives them their opportunity too but look at that Buyak is also in short order being and it's incredible how quickly they got across a gap of over 30 seconds it is and I think that's just because of the steepness and severity of this climb you can see how steep it is in parts you know getting up to 19 percent you know and that is unbelievably steep they'll have really small gear ratios to be able to get over these climbs and you can see Lucy Kennedy is giving it her all with this penultimate climb she's got Spratt and Annemiek van Vluten behind. She's really taken on this opportunity for herself, knowing that she's got two teammates behind that can potentially win this race. But Pauline Rackers is doing such a good job to stay with Lucy Kennedy. I rode with Pauline last year in what was WOW deals and is now CCC Live, headed by Mariana Voss. And she's yeah given it all, her all today alongside An Janneke Ensing who's having a really good second half of the season actually she was fourth in the hilly Basque Country race last week so she's really coming into good form and you can see she's just hanging on to Paulina as they're getting slightly distance here by Lucy Kennedy so do you ride this hill at your own rate and just see what happens at the top end? Are you kind of do you? Is there any sense that you might be minded to wait for one or two of those other riders? They might be useful to you later. I think for these three, they'll just purely be giving it their all to try and get over the top. So they've got almost a head start coming into the final climb. But I think on a climb like this, it's so so steep. You can't be looking at your powers and trying to pace it. It's almost a case of being, you know, 
feeling feeling the bike feeling how good it is knowing the length of the like the climb and just trying to get over it as quick as you can and you could see there i think ashley mormon passio was heading this um larger peloton behind yeah you got a slight sense you might be getting a little bit anxious there although they were blocked across the road so they weren't absolutely full on but ashley uh, mulman passio just dancing on the pedals to the front of this chase group and kennedy's solo she's gonna go for it uh, it's a long way home from here but as you mentioned she's on absolutely flying form in that stage of giro so that will be burning deep you know because she had to she'd done the work she'd done the hard work but there's no free win in a in a, in a race such as giro rosa and mariana Voss doesn't give them away in lucky bags <laughs> no exactly um but yeah it's really good to see her coming into such great form this year unfortunately last year i think she broke her collarbone twice she's quite new into the sport so she's obviously a fantastic bike rider but maybe lacks those technical skills that others have in the peloton um and yeah it's great to see today she's really taken her opportunity in such a you know big team like mitchell and scott with riders like spratt and van bluten behind this is her opportunity, she's taken it, and I think she could go all the way. Well, she's got a hell of an opportunity. It's showing at 53 seconds back to a, uh, a small chase group. And you know what? I think it is the French veteran Edwige Pitel who's leading that group for the Kogias uh, squad. She's been overhauled, though, because, well, no, this, of course, is the is Roy Ackers and Ensing. Ensing just in front of Roy Ackers, pushing hard. And uh, all these riders absolutely dying i mean you can't get uh, gears <laughs> to, to suit them on the bike i mean uh, picking out a gear for these hills would have been a, a big challenge for the mechanics yeah definitely and i think they'll have a huge kind of cassette on the back being able to just spin as much as possible if anything you know on sections of 19 percent and you can see she's just cresting the top of this climb now and I'm actually not sure of her technical descending ability, and I wouldn't say it was fantastic. And I know for sure Paulina is very nervous on the descent, as is Yannicka Ensing. So I guess that could play into each other's hands if n n none of them are kind of really confident in going downhill. And then maybe they'll be able to regroup and really work as a group of three into the bottom of the, the last climb. But well, she's not quite up over the top just yet. This is where it sort of uh, levels off ever so slightly and the gradient eases and the gear selection becomes less of an issue. And uh, small ratios, big cogs become less of an issue. I think this is Patel. Let's, let's see if we can get confirmation of that. A remarkable athlete she is. She's uh, 52 years young, would you believe? And she's been French national road champion as recently as uh, three years ago and was... Uh, somewhat a controversial pick indeed for the uh, French national team for last year's world championships in Innsbruck. It was uh, controversial only in terms of she thought it should have come a lot earlier than it had done. And uh, she gave a pretty good account of herself on that occasion as well. She doesn't race quite as often as uh, some of the other uh, the other women, but she was 40th in the, the recent uh, La Course by La Tour. A race taken in fine style by Mariana Voss. And uh, former winner of that event, uh, two-time winner of that event, of course, is Annemiek van Vluten of the Mitchell and Scott squad. She's got her teammate up front, Lucy Kennedy, has put it up to the other teams. A perfect tactical ploy. They've got the strength in numbers. Probably, uh, would you agree, they get the greatest strength and depth amongst all these teams in here? Yeah, for sure. Having three pure climbers in this race is great. And they're in the, they've are in they got the best case scenario here with Lucy Kennedy up front. She's not going to be dropped from that group of three. And then you've got Annemiek van Vluten and Amanda Spratt behind. Just being able to police that group of key riders they're going to be you know it'll be an attritional race here and you'll see that you know the the real climbers are going to be here at the end to to be able to follow each other now if any moves are made and i think ashley mormon passio is going to have to try and go early on these climbs um to try and get rid of the riders so ensing chasing hard behind in the company of pauline royackers these two riders uh a little bit of a headache now. What a fantastic vista it is over the Basque Country in the northern, uh, the northwestern part of Spain. And that's the gap between your leader up front, Lucy Kennedy, the 31-year-old Australian. Took great victory in the uh, Tour, uh, Tour de l'Ardèche in France in 2017. A, a hilly race, a very hilly race indeed. Not an easy race to win. Sits below the, uh, the very top level of uh, stage races 
uh, on the calendar, but nonetheless uh, tends to attract a very, very strong lineup. And it's uh, it's grippy country, and it's the sort of country that uh, would suggest that Lucy Kennedy has a great opportunity here now. 23 seconds to Group Two, which is uh, Roy Ackers and Ensing, and the peloton now almost two and a half minutes behind. So she's extended her advantage. I'm not so sure where. Well, they're showing Group Four indeed. So we've got the the Patel and the other riders who are somewhere in between. The, uh, the two chasers and what we're going to call the group of favourites two and a half minutes back. Mendezorots has been all but dealt with coming towards the conclusion of the penultimate climb of the day. Kilometre still to the top. Quite a way and uh, I'm still wondering whether the uh, Kennedy wants to go solo but let's just, I suppose she's saying let's just ride the hill and see which way the, the dice fall at the end of it it's a long way to the top of that hill and uh, Ensing and Roy Ackers could well wilt before they get to the top and at the moment you wouldn't bet on it, you certainly wouldn't bet on Kennedy suffering and there's the chasers in the third group who looked like they're within touching distance of, of that, uh, that duo of Ensing and Roy Ackers and one or two other riders riding solo on the climb. This could well be the, well, let's see if we can zoom in on that one and get confirmation. That looks like Bujak to me. She's just hanging in there for the last 700 meters to the top of this climb. And this will favor the riders just behind. It's a long straight road, so everyone will be able to see each other rather than something like a climb with switchbacks where you can hide and get out of sight. You've always got that carrot to try and chase here through these small gaps. And you can see they are coming down. The group with Paulina Royakas and Yannicka Ensing now to Lucy Kennedy is only 22 seconds. So they will have her in sight at points. And it helps so much to be able to, you know, keep pushing on, um, having someone to, to really chase. Great victory in Durango, Durango. Emma Kumin uh, Saria this year to give it its uh, long-winded and uh, exotic title. Race in Spain, 1.2 level, uh, one-day race that uh, Lucy Kennedy uh, took the took the victory in towards the end of May. So I've ridden that race myself as well, and you know it's exactly the same as these types of climbs, same sort of territory, super steep and that just suits her down to the ground. So I think she'll be rubbing her hands together now. This was obviously their game plan going into this race to launch Lucy Kennedy off the front, knowing that they've got a really good chance with her, but also having two favorites behind to, to be able to sit back and, and just follow. Yeah, it's quite the triple whammy, isn't it? Uh, of a, and a bit of a headache for the likes of the CCC Live uh, squad headed by Ashley Mulman Passio. We saw towards the front of that chase group behind, but they have, of course, got the, the knowledge and the awareness that the final hill of the day is, is quite a grippy one. Just over two kilometers. It's not the longest hill that they'll face uh, this afternoon, but it certainly is a challenging one. The Murgil Tontora awaits, and they hit the bottom of that climb with about 10 kilometers left. So still a little bit of uh, up and down for Lucy Kennedy. She's taken the mountains points. And it looks like Paulina Royakas has actually been dropped by Yannicka Ensing. So for her now, she will just have to get down this descent safely and then try and limit her losses. I think she'll be swallowed up from the riders behind who are pushing on. You've got Eugene Bujak just going over the top there um, with Patel behind. So this will be a really nice group if they can get together and work together before the final climb. And then I think it will just be a case of every man for themselves at the bottom and hoping that the real favorites don't don't catch them along the way three teams at the front uh, two nationalities the australian lucy kennedy is uh, chased by the two dutch women ensing Janneke ensing of the wnt rotor pro cycling squad these days it's a it's a german registered team formerly of course had its roots in britain and this looks like the remainders of the initial break that we had earlier today with Georgia Williams as well from Mitchelton Scott. You've got the Spanish champion in there. So again, these riders are in a great position being able to get over this penultimate climb safely without the favorites behind, being able to cause them too much trouble in terms of attacks yet. And then, like I said, the last climb is going to be savage. It's 2.1 kilometers averaging 10.1 percent 
with a max gradient of 19%. So I wouldn't like this. This yeah. is too steep for me. But yeah, <laughs> it's an absolute, you know, it's perfect for the likes of Annemiek van Vluten. Ida Marino as well from Movistar. She's a really small rider, really steep climbs, um, really favour her. So I think we're going to see a really good battle on this last climb up to up to the finish, which is actually over the other side and down at the bottom. So descending will, will be a big factor in this bike race as well. Quite the plateau, isn't there, across the top of this climb, which is, offers an opportunity for the chasers. This is Yannick Ensing chasing solo. So three riders solo at the, uh, at the head of affairs inside 35 kilometers remaining in this inaugural Donostia San Sebastian Classico 1.1 level UCI uh, race. So it's just below the World Tour, but it's uh, status, the live television con coverage that's uh, awarded to us and the uh, riders that have signed on, I think have elevated it above that and certainly made it uh, a very, very successful so far indeed uh, inaugural edition of this event. It uh, could well become a classic in every sense of the of the word. This is uh, Ensing chasing now. Does she wait for Roy Ackers or does Kennedy wait for her or do they just do their own thing and see what uh, see what happens at the bottom of the hill? They've got quite a way to go before they get there. Bottom I of the hill is reached with 97.4 kilometers completed. So that's about 30k to go. Yeah, I've been really impressed with WNT Rota this year. Um, they've had some really good results, and they seem to be really working well together as a team. This is Yannicka Enton's first year in WNT um, Rota. They've got a real mixture. They've got Kirsten Build, who will be, I'm sure, going for today's victory in, in Ride London later on today. And then you've got Yannicka Ensign, Erica Magnaldi, who had a fantastic result in the Giro. So it's, it's just great to see. Kennedy clear of the field and uh, a huge strength and depth and that's uh, a little bit of a sketchy she just couldn't get it stopped there it's kind of confusing really i think it uh, just caught her out slightly has she got some sort of a problem with the bike yeah it looks like she has got a problem she's looking down at her bike oh, front wheel. Yeah, yeah and it looks like she is going to have to sort a problem out here whether it's a puncture yeah, or gears i'm not sure yet it is a front wheel puncture by the looks of it lucy's undoing her wheel and she's just been passed by yannicka ensign so for Yannicka now, she is at the head of the race, and this is not what you want um, if you're Lucy Kennedy. It's changed things a little bit for the Michelin Scott squad. They now are chasing the race as opposed to being uh, the ones that could sit back and defend and watch with interest what others were going to do. It's the WNT Rotor squad, which has... Uh, as Danny has said, is a team that has stepped up their uh, divided programs today. It just shows the strength and depth of the uh, the head of women's cycling that we've got two big events. And this is the first big news that she got that she had uh, picked up a puncture. Not sure whether that's a tub or a, or a clincher that she's got on there, but she very quickly realized she had to get it stopped and found a straight bit of road as well, which made things safer for everyone, really. Yeah, I think lucky actually, you know, in a, on a descent like that, there's going to be super steep sections. So to be able to, to kind of stop. Well, she's got a safely. spare wheel and she's stopped again. And the, she's clearly, uh, her brakes are rubbing and she's uh, quite frantic to try and straighten up that brake stirrup. So it's uh, very frustrating. She picked up neutral service. She got a wheel really quickly, but maybe it's just not sitting in the uh, the dropouts absolutely perfectly. And these, this is a very, very technical descent. And of course, the, the sense of uh, feeling that friction of the, of the, uh, the 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 brake uh, the wheel rim running past the the brake blocks and just uh, yeah and just grabbing would uh, be very frustrating. So she's probably right to get it stopped and get it fixed quickly. Could well be as well that you could have a slightly uh, wider rim and it could have been in incompatible a bit with exactly just where those the way those brake stirrups were set up. Yeah, exactly, and that's not what you want at that stage. Obviously, you're hoping that the neutral uh, motorbike in this case had the right wheel for your calibers, your bike, um, because the team car will be way too far back to get to you in time. But the riders behind will be told of what's going on in the race. So for Annemiek van Vluten and Spratt now, their race is going to be on. And they will have a little bit more pressure now, not leading this race with Lucy Kennedy um, to you know, really go for it on, on the last climb if they haven't caught these riders um, ahead.
Yes, so difficult for the team cars to get up and across in these uh, tight, twisty, sinuous roads. It's really challenging for the team cars to service their riders. So I think Kennedy did the right thing to pick up a wheel from neutral service. You'll often see in pro cycling that the rider will wait for their team car because uh, in this day and age, there isn't always that uh, great amount of compatibility between the, the equipment on offer uh, from neutral service with what's uh, on offer from the various teams. There's a, a lot of different standards out there. and You've got the different between, of course, disc brakes and and uh, regular old uh, stirrup caliper brakes, and uh, that's just uh, that's just for starters. Different rim widths, different uh, tire sizes, and uh, that's just the wheels. Before you get into the rest of it, so it can be uh, pretty complicated stuff. I think Candy did the right thing, and let's hope that she's managed to get back up on her bike and is back up and into the chase at the moment. It's showing as a 55-second gap to Ensing, our leader, from her nearest challenger. Yeah, Ensign looks looked like she was really descending well. And it's always, you know, it's really interesting to know whether these riders have wreckied these courses. And it's not only that the climbs, you know, uphill that they need to wrecky, but it's also just important to look at the descents because that could be win, win or lose in a race as well. I know I used to use my Garmin, for example, when I was racing to look at the kind of severity of the corners to know exactly how much, you know, speed I needed to scrub off, whether it was kind of a hairpin or, or, or not. So it'll be really interesting to know whether these riders have done their research and if they're using things like a Garmin to be able to, um, you know, know how much speed they need to, to lose going around some of these corners. And it was it was accurate enough that you could actually see the hairpin coming up or see the, the right turn, left turn and get a sense of the of the entire oh that's it's impressive yeah yeah i actually spoke to alex dowsett one year before the the national championships time trial you know to get some last minute tips and he said that he did the same thing in the giro when he won the time trial so i thought right i'm gonna take that bit of advice and use it and it was it was really really good um in the last couple of years in my my cycling career on the descent especially just a little glance to know whether it was a tight corner or not or whether you needed to break at all I've always thought that a heads-up display for the uh, for the riders and thing, it, it, such technology does exist. I'm not sure if it's been perfected. I've never tested it myself, but a heads-up display on the, you know, just a, a camera, just giving them that little bit of extra information without having to glance down at the dash might uh, might be a great benefit and great boon. And uh, maybe it's uh, it's coming soon. It's going to trickle down and uh, become more uh, readily accessible and available as the as the research continues. Well, plenty of research being done by the uh, teams behind and indeed by uh, Yannicka. Ensing, she does a little research by looking over her right shoulder to see where her nearest chaser is. According to the uh, clock, we've got almost a minute to the good. And you know what? 30 kilometers to go. Yannicka Ensing is out there, and she's got a great opportunity. She's in the valley, heading towards the final hill on the first edition of Donostia San Sebastian Classico. They've got some work to do if they're going to get back up front uh, with the low leader out front inside the final uh, 25, 26 uh, kilometers of this inaugural Donostia San Sebastian Classico. Uh, it is groups all over the road. The uh, parkour has lived up to its billing as Edwig Patel, the veteran rider from France and riding with the uh, Kogias Metler Pro Cycling Team, finds herself in a chase situation. This is... Uh, we believe group two on the road just over a minute behind Buyak was up the road and has been hoovered up by chasers so she's got what she wanted out of this and Ensing is uh, clear of the rest and she has a minute advantage on her nearest chasers a group of three Lucy Kennedy who was out front ahead of that puncture and then that second delay to uh, reseat the wheel on her bike she now sits behind we believe the second group of three on the road and then you've got uh, group four on the road is just under two minutes behind and that includes many of the favorites georgia williams we've picked out ashley moonman passio as well to the fore as well and we're kind of assuming annemiek van vleuten and uh, amanda spratt is also in there as well that's the update because the penultimate climb of the day absolutely obliterated the uh, the peloton it has caused fractures all over the road those that were up front found themselves behind those that were behind found themselves up front there was quite the quite the mix up on that uh, on that hill the mendezorots heading towards the morgel tontora the the, uh, the foot of which is reached with just uh, smidgen under 10 kilometers remaining in the bike race they've got a little bit of a gripper to get up before they get there nothing particularly extensive but uh, well not by comparison with some of the hills they've faced today and indeed the final oh, that didn't work out 
Second time of asking, Buyak picks up a bead on. It's hot work out there. Yeah, that'll be a major concern of the riders today to be staying hydrated the whole time. It's really easy when you're racing to forget about drinking and fueling, but for this glass climb, they're going to have to be well fueled beforehand, get rid of the bottles before any extra weight. You do not want to be carrying over percentages of 19% um, up these final climbs. And you just saw there Paulina from um, CCC Live had been swallowed up by the two riders behind. And now they can really try and time trial and use that to their advantage that they have got numbers. And Yannicka Ensign's out there all on her own in total time trial mode and then this group behind as well is going to really have to collaborate together and i think that's the only problem with a group of this size there's quite a lot um, and there could be riders that kind of duck and dive at the back and get away with not doing their fair share of work and that can dis disrupt the, uh, the the group um, in terms of you know a real chase being on and you can see yannicka ensign this gap is going out and she's having an absolutely phenomenal um ride we just wonder what's being held back uh, from the the group of super favorites behind because no sign of Ashley Moorman, Passio, Annemiek van Vluten, Amanda Spratt, the big names are further behind. This is uh, uh, van der Heiden, Inge van der Heiden of the CCC Live squad who's gone up front to monitor this one. She's got Roy Akers further up the road, although not currently at the front of the race, so uh, she may be tempted to, to ride through and up. Hannah Nielsen's in there for BTC uh, City Ljubljana. Also picked out uh, Lizana, Leah Lizana from the NICAT squad, who is just going to watch some of the uh, top favorites and see what they're capable of in terms of closing it down. Alessia Vigilia from the Valkar Silent Cycling squad as well has also uh, made it into that room. So some of the... Uh, that uh, move. So some of the riders that we wouldn't think of as being A-listers or big favorites in there are up the road. They're trying to close down the advantage of your lone leader out front and it's it's certainly an interesting race and you wonder where the big <laughs> names are. It is really interesting but I think we're going to find you know the big hitters the likes of Annemiek van Vluten, Ashley Mormon Passio, Amanda Spratt, Ida Marino, they're all going to be in this group behind and I think it will kick off and we saw how quickly those gaps can come down on such steep climbs and you can see Lucy Kennedy's clawed her way back to this group of three now. Big, uh, big, big job there. The fantastic work for her to sort of shrug off those mechanical difficulties and to make it back up to uh, to Patel, to Buyak and to Roy Ackers and go straight to the front and they're going to have to react as uh, Patel has to just rock her shoulders a little bit. Buyak is calling for service again. Does she need more than the water she got uh, moments ago? Maybe she needs uh, Perrier in there. But uh, it's uh, Kennedy that goes straight to the front. She's going to wonder whether anyone's going to assist, but she's clearly got great legs today. Yeah, she's on a mission today. It's obviously the game plan, like I said before, for her to be up the front before they start this last climb. So for her now, she's going to have to commit, even if it means pulling these three with her behind. I think she could do that with confidence that she will be the strongest out of these three. I think if you're not, you've got to really weigh up in this situation what riders you're with and how much you can contribute at this stage of the race with still such a significant climb um, to the finish. So I think you're going to see Lucy Kennedy getting a bit frustrated in this group. It looks like the other riders aren't keen to kind of push on with her. She's looking behind, you know, putting her elbow out as, as if to say, come on, help me with this, girls, um, and doesn't seem to have much collaboration. She's still on the front here. And um, Yannicka's gap is slowly increasing. Yeah, it's up over one and a quarter minutes now, and Kennedy's going to do it all on her own. Is this because the others just haven't got it, or they don't really know uh, what to be doing? Kennedy is clearly, by some considerable margin, the strongest rider in there, and they're all feeling it now. They're well over 100 kilometers in their legs at this point, and they're all aware, I think, of this tough, tough climb to come. Well, the question is, will they be able to close in just, uh, just 2.1 kilometers? Regardless of the extreme severity of the gradient coming up, 2.1 kilometers, they're going to be able to get up over a minute uh, to get to, to the leader up front. So it's, it's an anx anxious moment for them. Yeah, it is. But you can see there's only about 30 seconds between the second and third group here on the road. And to be honest, I think if I was the three riders behind Lucy, I'd probably be doing the same because they are, you know, the strongest team on paper. They've got, she's got Annemiek van Vluten behind. She's got Amanda Spratt behind. So she's going to have to just, you know, give it her all 
and, and hope to get rid of them on the final climb if those favorites haven't caught them by that time. Well, they know that Kennedy is absolutely committed to riding, absolutely 100%, and if uh, they might as well use up her, her strength. So it's, it's a decent tactical ploy, decent uh, play. Let's pick up some of the names in the group behind. Perini has been picked up and is in there. Lazana is, uh, as we've mentioned, the Spanish champion, Oya Abida, is in this group as well for the Movistar squad, I do believe. This is the, uh, the group that we're picking up. Maybe that's the group further behind. Groups everywhere. This is like Ensing. We know who that is. It, it, we do. And it looked like an Ali Cipollini rider was just trying to attack off the front of that group. So you might see that group trying to kind of split up um, into a few different kind of smaller groups. Like I said before, with a big group like that, you don't always get the collaboration that you need to really close the gaps at this stage of the bike race. And you also saw... Ina van der Heiden in there, and she is the um, world cyclocross under 23 champion. She's a really young rider. I know I was riding on the team with her last year. She didn't do that many road races, and obviously because this race is being split with Ride London, she's getting an opportunity and doing a fantastic ride today. Up front, uh, one rider racing solo. Uh, it is Janneke Ensing for the WNT Pro Cycling Squad, the Dutch woman racing to glory. Can it be? Well, she's got a long way to go before she gets there. She's got one major headache, which is the final climb of the day, the Morgil Tontora. 2.1 kilometers in length at an average of 10.1 and with gradients as steep as 19%. Uh, as We're half bay between the penultimate climb and the final climb of the day, which will go a long way to the deciding the... Uh, destination of honors in this inaugural Donostia San Sebastian Classic Hour. And Singh with work to do still, but she's extending her advantage. Three riders behind, or four riders make that, and it's Lucy Kennedy who's doing most of the work, having recovered from her mechanical woes. She's managed to chase up to that group of three, including uh, Patel, Roy Ackers, and Buyak. No uh, tactical complications at all for uh, for Ensing. She's just got to knuckle down to it and uh, ride her heart out. Give what she can. And at the moment, it's, it's something of a one-on-one -on -one between herself and Lucy Kennedy, and she's gaining time. I was literally just about to say the same thing here. It's, it is one-on-one. -on -one total kind of time trial mode and I think that would favor Yannicka Ensing until they hit the bottom of the climb where I think Lucy Kennedy will be be the stronger rider but you can see Yannicka Ensing for the majority of this time on the flatter section of road she's been on her drops Lucy Kennedy here com more comfortable on the on the hoods but Yannicka's really getting the power down here I'm sure she'll be looking at her power meter and really trying to ride at that threshold power that she knows she can sustain until she hits the bottom of the climb and on a, on a steep climb like that, it's going to just be a case of trying to get the, to the top as quickly as possible. And the good thing for Ensing is that she's on her own here. She's solo and she can just really ride at her own pace. She doesn't have to, you know, worry about anyone just sitting on her behind, getting frustrated with that, like Lucy Kennedy might be here, having to do this all the work in, in this small group behind. It's impressive work at the moment, isn't it, from 31-year-old uh, uh, Australian. She's from Brisbane on the west coast of Australia and uh, Lucy Kennedy who won the uh, women's Harold Suntour down under last year oh, sorry this year in 2019 string of very strong results indeed across 2019 you really feel like this is a bit of a breakout year for her. stage victory and the overall success in the uh, women's Harold Suntour event including some strong results in this part of the world as we've mentioned Hensing 2 is having a very strong year and there's a 32-year-old from the Netherlands. Moved across to the uh, WNT Rotor Pro Cycling Squad in the middle of May. Formerly with, uh, with Team Sunweb. Interesting mid-season switch for her. Uh, it could well uh, pay dividends both for her and for the WNT Pro Cycling Squad. Uh, a squad that has ramped up in ambition and in the results they've been able to deliver of late. Took the victory in Le Salmon in 2018, so that's an indication of the, the pedigree of this rider. She's obviously got a lot of morale as well. Switching teams, you know, you've got, you know, a real kind of, I guess, a bit of pressure, you know, when you switch at this late stage in the season. But also, you know, she's come into this WNT Rosa team who are having such a fantastic year. You can see these two groups now merging together. And I think it'll be interesting. I think we'll see some attacks happening now because this group is so big.
Well, the Chase Group, uh, Chase Group 3 on the road has managed to close it down. Lucy Kennedy has actually been chased down. Uh, is that Georgia Williams just on the front of that group? So makes more sense, really, for the uh, Mitchell and Scott to have a little bit of a reset and a rethink about what they're going to do here as Kennedy has a little look around and realizes Jess Allen. That is Georgia Williams on the front. Georgia Williams. Yeah, so she is going to now probably be working for Lucy Kennedy. Georgia Williams isn't the best climber, um, so her job will be done, I'm sure, at the bottom of this final climb, and they're going to hope that these big hitters aren't don't, don't catch them at the bottom. And this gives a really big opportunity to some of these riders in this group now who you wouldn't almost think could be at the front at this stage of the bike race. So it'll be interesting to see what the gap is behind this group to the big favourites um, that I picked out before the start of this race. Well, let's widen the shots. Still no sign of them behind. But it is absolutely Georgia Williams that's in there. The uh, Michelin Scott squad of two riders in this group. Also, uh, good numbers for the uh, CCC lift squad. They've got uh, Paulina uh, Royackers, who we've seen climbing with great facility. And she's accompanied by Inge van der Heiden, who's come up from the group behind. So this is going to be interesting. We've at least two riders, and probably more, who will contribute to the pacemaking here. So well, the time of... Uh, Janneke Ensing gaining time on the group behind on her nearest challenger could well be at an end because almost immediately the gap comes down from 118 to 1, you know, 17, 16, 15, 14. This is quite an injection of pace here. Up a little bit of a drag and still it's coming towards uh, to coming towards the chasers. So it's it's finally poised about 8.5k, maybe 5 miles to the foot of the final climb of the day. Yeah, my prediction is I think she'll just about stay away to the bottom of the climb and then fireworks will go off from the bottom. You'll have riders attacking left, right and centre, especially if the favourites haven't caught this group behind. Um, but what a ride here from Mitchelton Scott and the CCC live team. I think Ashley Mormon Passy will be really happy. I think before the start of this race, she could have potentially been worried that she didn't have that strength and depth within the team without some of the key domestiques from the team. Um, as the likes of Mariana Voss, who was working for her in the Giro, also Rihanna Marcus, who is a fantastic domestique. But these girls are really stepping up and, and, and riding really well together. So Mitchelton Scott and Team CCC live both with two riders in this break um, with 108 over Yannicka Ensing in the front. Yeah, one wonders with great interest what's exactly, what exactly is happening with the, the heavy hitters behind. Are they all looking at each other to the point where the race is disappearing off up the road? It could well be the case, but let's not rule them out. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's all sorts of fireworks behind. Uh, we get the information as it comes to us. It's all about getting, keeping your riders fed. This is uh, Chiara Perini, who was up the road on the last climb and has, is uh, being hoovered along in the, in the wake of great rides. It's the first chase group. Now their deficit has been paired to just a smidgen over a minute. So the gain on our lone leader up front, Yannicka Ensing, is reducing and reducing dramatically. It's quite the injection of pace that we've seen of late from uh, Georgia Williams. She's riding in the service of Lucy Kennedy, who's been gathered up here. Kennedy riding solo herself for a long time, wasn't she, until that, uh, that puncture. You know what? It might actually, in a kind of a way, work out for her because, uh, you know, with, the, with the, the quality of the chase behind, of course, uh, Williams wouldn't have been chasing, would she, if, uh, if Lucy Kennedy had been out front on her own. But you know, if it came down to a, a case where all of these riders were riding, just be the perfect launch pad for her coming onto that final hill. Yeah, potentially a, a blessing in disguise because, like you say, if Lucy Kennedy hadn't have punctured and she'd got to the bottom of that descent solo, she would have had to have done this whole section on her own. But now she's got Georgia Williams with her, the perfect rider in this scenario. She is the time trial champion from New Zealand. and So that is the rider you want helping you into the bottom of the final climb. And I think this is the last group on the road um, with the last uh, hitters in ready for the last climb. Well, it's the Movie Star team that have lined out on the front in service of the rider who you see uh, fifth in shot there. 
She's just got Amanda Spratt sitting right in front of her, so we found them. <laughs> These are uh, the big names, and they're not giving this one up without a fight. The Movie Star Squad want to try and uh, propel the diminutive figure of Ida Marino into uh, the perfect and prime position coming on to that last and extremely steep climb. So just how far behind are they? Still waiting for a time. They're not in shot, and still Williams presses on. And presumably, uh, in the wake of the Movie Star led group behind, you've got the likes of Anamika Van Vloot, and certainly Amanda Spratt is in there and waiting to pounce. Yeah, and it looked like they just got a bit of a heads up from their team car there, the Mitchelton Scott um, team car, to say keep pressing on. You know, George is clearly in time trial mode here on the drops, you know, looking really focused to try and help Lucy Kennedy get to this the bottom of this climb in, in pole position. So I think that's what they're going to do here. They're going to give it their everything, and, and then it'll be really interesting to see what the gap is from from this group behind. Movi Star, uh, obviously riding for for that one rider, Ida Marino. She's got the best chance, although they have got one rider in this group. They're giving it giving it everything from behind, and you could see Sprat within the the Movi Star riders at the front. Um, you know, ready to to attack it, it, if they do get to the bottom and they do catch these riders ahead. Well, they've got numbers. Have they got the legs to try and uh, and do a job? Well, there's about a kilometre an hour difference between the chase group and the head of the race in the last 10 minutes. I'd be interested to know what the third group is doing in relation, in relation to the second group. Let's try and see some names in there. Anasem Testaban is uh, certainly in there. Magnaldi has also made it in. Asya uh, Paladin. You can see Annemiek van Vluten and Ashley mormon Passio having a chat there at the back, deciding what they're going to be doing, I guess, if this does come back. They'll be fighting are against each other. they the best of other. enemies at the moment. They are, they yeah. are for sure. Um, two riders that I would have said likely to be one and two. Um, and you can see Movistar still on the front. It's Yazinska, um, who I rode with a couple of years ago in Team Silence. She's a super strong rider, and this is perfect terrain for her rolling terrain not an out and out climber but one that will do the best she can for her teammates yeah, Yamas there as well who led over one of the earlier climbs and was leading the uh, queen of the mountains competition at one stage uh, those uh, points have been reshuffled a little bit we'll let you know yeah if we hear them before the end of the broadcast but all eyes and all focus really on what's going to happen uh, in terms of the, the victory, it's all about getting to the line first at the moment. Yannicka Ensing has given herself a racer's chance, but that gap and that advantage is shrinking. And it's shrinking fast, and she needs to get to the foot of the climb with a decent advantage, a healthy lead, because we saw on the, on the last climb just how quickly things can change on a really steep climb. Yeah, it, it does, and I saw there Annemiek van Vluten talking into the radio, so whether she's given Lucy Kennedy a bit of a, a pep talk into the last final climb, they didn't seem to be, you know, catching this group, so it could be a case that these riders are going to get the opportunity for for a victory because, you know, they're, they're out there and, and, and it's not they're not being caught by the likes of van Vluten, Spratt, Passio. Well, Van Vluten's had an exceptional season. She's had an exceptional couple of years. Is this the kind of event where she might actually be thinking about payback to her her, uh, her teammates who've done such great work for her? Yeah, definitely. And you even saw that in the Giro. There was one stage where she was leading Spratt out, and unfortunately Spratt didn't make it. But I thought that was absolutely amazing to see, especially in you know a 10-day stage race that she was clearly going for the victory in. And it was just unbelievable to see what kind of form Annemiek Van Vluten is in, you know, winning the Giro in such fine form. Three minutes, 45 seconds um, in front of second place of, of Anna van der Breggen. And that's a, a shame. The only problem with this race, you are missing four of the big teams. With it being a, a split day of racing with Ride London tonight, you're missing. There's no Bowles Dolmans with van der Breggen or Katie Hall that this race would really favour. No Trek with Elisa Longo Borghini. No Sunweb with Lucinda Brand, who was sixth in the Giro, or Canyon Shram with New Adoma, who was fifth. So you're actually missing five of the top ten of the Giro. So um, I think you'll see as years go on, you know, the strength and depth in women's racing, it's definitely improving. It improves so much throughout my career. Um, but unfortunately for today, with it being a split race, you aren't seeing a totally, you know, strong, strong field out there today. 
Well, a pretty strong display by Yannick Ensing, but her advantage has dwindled and it's uh, shrinking rapidly. Down to 40 seconds, that hill in a way can't come quick enough, but then has she got the strength to prevail on it? Because uh, Georgia Williams, what a powerhouse to play, display. She's the uh, two-time and reigning New Zealand national time trial champion. She's taken a string of strong results over the last couple of years, uh, including, of course, a national road title, a road race title as well. Fifth overall in the Women's Herald Sun Tour last year. Fourth overall in the uh, Makumin Bira in uh, 2018. Fourth in the Tour of Guangxi Women's World Tour event. Uh, on a pair of legs for the uh, Michelin Scott squad to put into the chase. And we're not getting any indication about whether that uh, Movistar-led group behind is making any inroads whatsoever. Certainly the Michelin Scott squad and indeed the uh, CCC Live team are watching with interest to see what Movistar can do. Ashley Moulman Passio too, is she satisfied to have Paulina Royakers and Inge van der Heiden up the road and to see what they can do about uh, producing a result for themselves? Yeah, maybe. It's a really, um, really good opportunity for them. Both really great climbers, so it'll be really exciting to see what happens now. 12.3 kilometers remaining in the inaugural Donostia San Sebastian Classico and the, well, they're lighting the fireworks at the moment. And we're going to see the uh, Catherine wheel spinning and the, <laughs> the rockets uh, flaring off uh, very shortly because Georgia Williams is leading this group towards the front of the climb and now inside 40 seconds uh, removed from Yannicka Ensing. What a superb job is being done out front by the 32 year old Dutch woman. As I say, it has a classics pedigree. Victory in the Salmon des Dames in uh, 2018. Head of Florcha Mackay. Soloing in ahead of a, a small group led in by uh, Florcha Mackay of the uh, Team Sunweb squad. So quality rider, quality performance, quality athlete. She showed herself to be a strong climber last time up the, uh, the Mendes Sordots but not quite the equal of Lucy Kennedy. So uh, Kennedy's like a coiled spring here. She's waiting to launch, waiting to pounce. They make the left turn off the big road, heading towards the smaller lanes. This gradient is going to grip very shortly, and uh, Georgia Williams is just going to move aside and send her on with her best wishes. Yeah, and my prediction is that she will. As soon as this road starts going uphill, Lucy is going to give it everything to try and catch Annika Ensign, probably go straight past and hope she can hang on on, on the descent. Um, but yeah, this is a perfect case scenario now for Lucy Kennedy, who was pretty stressed out before when she got a, an, an earlier puncture on the descent when she was away solo in this race. But now I think actually, again, like you said, a blessing in disguise. She's got Georgia Williams, who's actually just now peeled off. Her job for the day is done. She will now be going backwards just to get to the finish line. And now Lucy Kennedy is all about this rider for the Mitchelton Scott team to be able to put the hammer down. Um, and hopefully get rid of the riders behind. Led by Erica Magnaldi, I do believe. Wait for confirmation of that. But certainly WNT Road or Pro Cycling are defending the interests of Ensing up front. And uh, could it be Hamas who's on fine form? Hamas indeed has, has uh, come up with some strong results in recent days. She won the Turrigan late, um, earlier on this year. She's having a fantastic season. So again, a great opportunity for her with strong favourites behind. This could be a real you know, chance for her for another result for herself. So I think it will be a case of hanging on to Lucy Kennedy's will for as long as she possibly can now. Well, it's Kennedy that is going to set the tempo. The advantage down to 34 seconds, but it's holding steady at the moment. And all of these riders have uh, two finish lines. They've got the top of the hill, and then they've got the uh, the real one. But if you get to the top of the hill with any sort of an advantage, then you can think about trying to retain that. It uh, descends all the way to the final, what, about 2.7 kilometers. Then it's a flat road. And if you've got some sort of an advantage on the top of the hill, you should be able to hold it. A look at the way that Ensing is fighting this this gradient you remember it's an average of 10.1 percent and the going downhill right now so that'll give you some indication of just how tough this this uh, hill can really get yeah exactly if it's got that sort of average and it's going down in the middle that's why you see in these maximum gradients of up to 19 percent 
And you can see CCC Liv as well, patrolling the front with um, Pauline Royek is on the right-hand side of your screen and Ina van der Heiden in the middle, having a great ride. These two really young riders, Paulina, really great climber and she climbs always out the saddle. You'll see her in the saddle for a lot of this climb, I'm sure. It's just the way she rides, um, really specific, great riding style. Talking in the radio now, probably saying that she's feeling good these two really doing a good job for ashley mormon passio who will be the favorite going into the the start of this race today and hiding on the front roy acker is waiting to launch and a sense that it's the phony war there a little bit we've got the spanish champion lord uh, oyarbida sitting uh, towards the back in the uh, blue jersey with those spanish stripes i was doing a bit of research on lords uh, earlier today for the spanish champion and on pro cycling stats it said she was 43 kilos that is light so that is what you want for the for these sort of climbs i think the lightest i ever was when i was riding was about 59 so you're talking nearly 20 kilos different so you know these sort of climbs really do favor the lighter riders it is all about power to weight when you know you're getting over sort of these 10 percent gradients yeah, her bike is one seventh of the total weight, isn't it? <laughs> Remarkable. And uh, that is, uh, it's power to weight country, isn't it? And we're going to hit the really, really steep ramps. And they know this hill, and they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And the gap is coming down to and to uh, to Yannicka Ensing up front, but yet to fully commit to this hill. Ensing is completely committed to it, which she has to be. I mean, just getting up it is no mean feat. Trying to race up it is a different thing altogether, especially when you've got uh, the bones of 110, 111 kilometers in your legs at this point. So uh, it's all kicking off up front. As Kennedy goes for glory. And you can see on these steep sections, the riders are almost leaning over their bikes just to get the power through the pedals on such steep sections of the race. And Lucy's just got her sights set. You know, she's obviously super focused, riding within herself. And you can see gaps forming behind. And you could just see there at the back of the screen, they are, they have got Yannicka Ensing in sight now. So even though it's 30 seconds, I'm sure this gap is going to be closed down very quickly. Hammer's fighting desperately to stay on the wheel of Kennedy, who's showing the, uh, the pain of the effort that she's making. Cat Ham is looking quite controlled behind. She was still in the saddle, really focusing on staying with Kennedy at this stage. They're all going to be hurting. So it's such a mental game as well, climbing. It's not just physical. It's being able to really push through those moments where everyone is hurting. And that's what you have to try and really remember when you're riding. If you were hurting, the chances are everyone else was also hurting at the same time. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if fortunes fluctuate a little bit on this hill as well as uh, riders go forward and then maybe uh, suffer for the effort that they've made. Let's see, Van der Heiden's suffering a little bit here. She's following and there's a little bit of a few cracks starting to develop. Uh, in this in this chase group meanwhile still serene progress she's still got 26 kilometers 9.3 kilometers remaining i can tell you uh, the uh, the road book would suggest that we reach the summit of this hill with just 7.7 .7 kilometers left in the bike race uh, so still quite a way to go always assuming that uh, the road book is tallying with the ticker at the top left of your screen so far it's been fairly accurate so we can only assume that it's well, it's still over, what, about 1.4 kilometers of racing up this hill for Lucy Kennedy to get on terms with your lone leader. And you can see Lucy Kennedy has dropped those riders behind, so she's on her own now. She's got a motorbike in between her. That will favor her, so the riders behind won't have so much of a carrot to chase, and she will just be hoping to see the back of Yannicka Ensing, who has given it her all with one kilometer to the top and to pretty much the end of this bike race with only the descent and a couple of K to, to the real finish line. Like you said before, there's almost two finishes, finish lines in this race. And you can see this is such a steep section now. She's almost coming to a halt. You know, she's given it absolutely everything. Such a strong, powerful rider. And, you know, she's oh, climbing Kennedy. fantastically today with Lucy Kennedy hot on her heels now. She can see her in her sights. Well, within a kilometre of the top of this hill, but Lucy Kennedy is going to get back on terms, it would seem, with Ensing. Ensing still riding in a straight line, hasn't quite come to the winding and twisting around the road that 
Well, what I'd be doing, I'd probably be walking up the road at this stage. This is remarkable stuff. 16% at uh, the current point, and Kennedy's just dancing on the pedal. She's surely coming across here really, really quickly, and I see little doubt really at this point that Ensing is going to uh, wilt here and I don't think she's going to be able to hold off Kennedy to the top of this climb. Yeah, look at the difference now in speed between Lucy Kennedy and Yannicka Ensing. She is, you know, she's closing that gap so quickly. You can see with their riding styles, Yannicka Ensing's out the saddle, really laboured to the top of this climb and Lucy Kennedy still sitting down with a really great cadence. Um, you know, considering the severity and the steepness of this section of, of climbing here. So Yannick is not going to be looking back, and I think she's going to have a bit of a surprise when Lucy Kennedy, I'm sure, will just go straight past her with 800 metres to go. Knowing Lucy Kennedy is not, you know, super confident on the descent, she's going to have to try and get a bit of time in hand because Yannick Ensign looks super strong, super confident going downhill beforehand, and she's going to need... To, to try and get away solo for the finish. You can see Pauline Royak is again, you know, all these riders now, it's just a case of getting to the top as quickly as they can to be able to get to the bottom safely and set it up for, for the finish line. Yeah, if you want to know where the steep bit is, uh, just look at the crowds, they'll always tell you, because that they have, they have come to gather and to uh, to watch the suffering. It is uh, it's a peculiar sport in that way, but this is where the big results are made, and that is where we've had a change of leader. Lucy Kennedy's back in front, and will Singh be able to find something in her reserves to stay with Kennedy or at least to stay within touching distance you know what 650 kilometers to, uh, meters indeed to the top of this hill doesn't sound like a lot but it's a long long way it is that is such a long way if these sections are getting up to 20 percent and averaging 10 percent this climb is super super steep and 600 meters like you say it's still a couple of minutes of riding which you know, is a, is a long, long way. And if you've blown kind of like Yannicka Ensign, she's been away on her own for a long time. She was on her own solo for that sort of 15, 20 kilometer section in between climbs. And Lucy Kennedy had the help of her teammate, Georgia Williams, for a good section before getting to the bottom of this climb. So yeah, 500 meters to go now, a couple of minutes of pain before they need to really, really focus for the descent. Yeah, somewhat cruelly, there's about a half a kilometre of plateau across the top of the climb, so for Ensing, this could be really uh, her, her Waterloo moment because I don't think she's going to be able to stay with Kennedy. And the question is, will she be within touching distance? Will she be within chasing distance on the descent? That's what she's got to believe now. That's the, new, the, the news that she'll be getting and the encouragement that she'll be getting to say that you can get back on and get back in touch. And there's a huge result for her uh, waiting if she can hold off the rest as well, led by by uh, Pauline Royakers, who's back in contention as well. Within 360 odd meters of the top of this climb, the Basque flags fly and the encouragement is massive and that will give uh, Lucy Kennedy and indeed all the riders the huge boost that will send them on up and over the top of this grippy climb. This is amazing to see all the fans out there. This is the same climb as the men will finish on later on today in, in the race. And what what a moment for Lucy Kennedy to have th these fans at the top with only a couple of hundred metres to go before the descent that hopefully she can hold off Yannicka Ensing on over the plateau, like you said. This will be one of her biggest victories of her cycling career. Crowds are out early. They've got a double helping of top-class international bike racing with Lucy Kennedy leading the charge through to the top of this tough hill. She's almost got it done. Behind her, Yannicka Ensing is in a world of her trying to hold off Roy Ackers. And uh, so sure, she's still there. I think she is, yeah. yeah still clear of uh, Roy Ackers and uh, just got enough of a distance. But will there be enough time to get back on terms with Lucy Kennedy, who has shrugged off? that delay, that puncture delay and having to pick up a, a wheel from neutral service and then having to get uh, get back off the bike and just make an adjustment to that wheel and make sure, I'm not sure whether she got a second new wheel or whether they just uh, reseated that one, we'll hear the news afterwards, but suffice it to say the Murgil Tontora has pretty much been dealt with He's on that uh, flat little plateau road and then it will plunge down towards Donostia San Sebastian and the work will be done.
it's great to see Lucy Kennedy getting her opportunity today. She was a fantastic teammate and domestique for Annemiek van Vluten. And she is normally a domestique for the whole of the season. So it's great that she's getting her opportunity in such a big team of Mitchelton Scott. And she will be going all the way to the line today, I'm sure, before she looks back, before she celebrates, um, unlike the Giro when unfortunately pit for the line by Voss. Across the top of the final climb of the day, and it's Lucy Kennedy clear of the field, clear with an advantage of 46 seconds on the third place riders, Pauline uh, Royackers. And somewhere about halfway in between, we believe, is uh, still Yannicka Ensing. So is the deficit 20 odd seconds? Would it be closer to 30? It'd be lovely to know. Hopefully, we'll get the update very shortly because Lucy Kennedy, I suspect she'd like to know too whether she has a comfortable lead, whether she can, well, make her own way down this hill without taking any undue or unnecessary risk. She'll certainly uh, be happy and that she has some sort of an advantage. Inside seven kilometers remaining of the Donostia San Sebastian Classico. It's been a wonderful addition to the to the to the calendar. It's an absolutely fabulous parkour, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And like I was saying before, the climbers don't get many opportunities within the women's calendar. So for those to have a real opportunity, a real chance to have a victory in such a prestigious race, it is fantastic. And I hope that this will be a race that we'll see now year upon year for, for the women. And you can see the coastline in the distance. That is where they are going to be descending to with about three kilometers to go then when they hit the flat section of road into the last few corners to the finish line, which finishes right right on the coast so well, you can see Yannicka Ensing now starting this descent this is not a done deal it's showing at 19 seconds and the, when they were on the uh, the valley road in between the second last and last climbs it was Ensing that was gaining on uh, on the well the group including Lucy Kennedy it was only when Georgia Williams arrived that they got the real impetus and were able to close down and then then she was sort of given that springboard that launching pad into the final climb so Ensing will be made aware of that she has already gone toe-to-toe -to -toe on a flat road on the descent well when they're at least able to pedal and get on top of the gear it could well be that Ensing has a shout here it's still showing at 19 seconds hasn't made any inroads of late but you know what 5.5 kilometers left they've got almost three kilometers of flat road at the bottom of the hill so the nerves will still be a jangling the gap's starting to come down for sure and anything can happen in a bike race like this like you said the gaps are still very very small and i think this finish to the race actually does favor yannicka ensing who is around 17 18 seconds behind lucy kennedy here so lucy's really got her work cut out she's going to really have to focus now on this descent she's just gone through the five kilometers to go mark she can't take any risks but at the same time she needs to focus on getting down this hill as, as fast as she can yeah, can't take any risks, but does have to try and uh, push on. And you know what? It's it's a, it's a fine balancing act, isn't it, between being comfortably inside your envelope and just nudging the edges of it to ensure that you get the most out of out of your situation. The red light uh, is uh, one to be ignored on these closed roads, and uh, she'll plunge down through that left-hand hairpin. The gap's still holding steady at 18 seconds, and Ensing needs to start making inroads sometime soon. She's going to get back on terms. Pauline Royackers is not, in turn, making any inroads, and one wonders whether she's going to become vulnerable to the, the chasers behind. I think there were two or three involved, uh, Patel among them, and this is the third group. And it Chasing. looks like Paulina is just being caught by these two behind. Unfortunately for her, I know she isn't confident going downhill, which is such a shame because obviously in a race like this, you could be the best climber. But if you all the way to the line, but again, never say never. And so much can happen in these last few stages of a bike race. Gap's going up. Superb job by Lucy Kennedy. She's gained four seconds in the last kilometer, and that is a huge chunk of change at this point in the bike race. Inside the final three and a half kilometers, inside probably about five, six hundred meters, maybe even less uh, to the bottom of the hill. And you can tell that we're coming into the urban area, and San Sebastian, or Donostia, as many like to call it, is, uh, has been reached. 
And there the finish line is tantalizingly within touching distance for Lucy Kennedy in what would be perhaps one of her greatest victories and suggests certainly among her uh, greatest one day successes and she seems to have done enough at this point 23 seconds the gap is continuing to rise as she hits the the flatter section it's still it's still dipping somewhat but the uh, percentage descent is reduced significantly and it's now up to 24 seconds she's the strongest she is endured across 127 kilometers she's still got the strength to go and go and she's just got to finish this one off there are a few little twists and turns in the last couple of kilometers but the tough work's been done what a ride for lucy kennedy to get today she's taken her opportunity early in the race she was out solo she punctured on the descent had to change her wheel was passed by Yannicka ensing was joined very very well by a, a teammate georgia williams who's towed her to the bottom of this climb she's managed to catch Yannicka, go straight past and now she's hit this flat section and she's still putting time into second place so this is going to be one of the biggest victories in, in Lucy's career. And to be the first, you know, first San Sebastian for the women, a prestigious race, she's definitely going to go down in history here. Yeah, it's a beautiful race in every sense. A beautiful parkour, beautiful organization. It's a beautiful part of the world. And it has been beautifully presented indeed by the riders as well in the peloton in this inaugural Donostia San Sebastian Classico. And it's surely going the way now of uh, Lucy Kennedy of Australia and the Michelin Scott squad chased by uh, the valiant effort and there's uh, Patel now with uh, Roy Ackers and uh, Christina great uh, response as well from Chris Christina who's up the road in that uh, that duo with Buyak indeed Christina now is in the chase group wasn't she and she's the one that she's gone ahead Buyak has been closed down and Corsia Christina has now got her opportunity to go for a uh, top three finish but the focus is on your leader out front into the closing moments the final mile of racing includes a couple of 90 degree turns she's got a couple more corners to get round before she'll be thinking about her victory and like i was saying before i'm sure she will go all the way to the line even though she has got 24 <laughs> seconds she could really milk it but you know knowing what happened before in the giro with voss being so hot on her heels i don't think she'll let herself believe she's won until she has crossed the line no, she, the hands won't go up until she reaches the beach about <laughs> half an hour later I think. but you know what uh, she deserves this and what a fantastic response to i suppose psychologically could be a difficult a difficult situation having lost in such difficult circumstances to mariana voss in the in Giro. So she shrugged it off quite quickly and put it behind her she put behind her as well those little mechanical issues uh, on the road out there today so she's certainly capable of uh, of facing a challenge meeting it and then coming up with a great response and that's what she's done today definitely and i know her teammates speak so highly of lucy kennedy and it's great that she's been able to have her opportunity today you know definitely not coming in as favorite i'm sure her team will be really really happy that she's been able to take the victory going into the last couple of corners with 750 meters to go yeah this is the third and final race in these uh, three days in the basque country and two victories going the way of the michelin scott squad sarah roy took the win on thursday but now it's going to be the win and the biggest one of all the weekend race the uh, classico uh, donostia san sebastian the inaugural edition and down to the final few hundred meters she's starting to believe a 20 odd second advantage over Ensing, who we, uh, I suppose, uh, it's uh, lacking in objectivity to say that we hope that uh, we, she hangs on for second, but it's been a brave resistance for her, and Ensing surely is going to uh, mount the podium, but there's no doubt about the woman on the top step. It's going to be your victor. She has a little look over her shoulder, and she's starting to smile. A victory that she so dearly wanted is coming, and it's within weeks of that Giro Rosa six. The arms are going in the air, and she is the winner as Lucy Kennedy takes the victory, punches the air in delight, and she takes the first Donostia San Sebastian Classic. Ensing is in the final home straight. Brave effort from her, and a great, uh, a great result indeed for the, the Netherlands woman with the WNT Rotor Pro Cycling Squad. Almost, but not quite, but still a great and something to celebrate too for uh, for Ensing in second place. And we wait with interest to see who comes third, but Kennedy can now at last celebrate.
Both riders super happy with their rides today. Lucy Kennedy and you could see Annika Ensing going across the line. I think second place is like first place for her today. I don't think she would have expected a podium. So fantastic ride from, from both these riders. So the sprint for uh, third place on the line and it uh, looks as if this is uh, Corsina who's going to try and hold off Roy Ackers, but she's not going to do it. Roy Ackers gets up for third for the CCC lift squad, so it's a uh, Netherlands 2-3. I'm personally so, so happy for Paulina. That will be one of her biggest, you know, biggest results of her cycling career. So it's a trip to the podium for Lucy Kennedy, who's delivered in fine style for the Mitchell and Scott squad. They came with the... Uh, a squad packed with strength in numbers, and they never really had to call for the the strength and ability of uh, Annemiek van Vluten behind. It was the, the the riders that are normally the workers who were able to deliver on the day. Well, more celebrations to come. We're going to uh, step out for a quick uh, commercial break back after this. I'm still in a little bit of shock, really. Um, I had some bad luck there on the descent with a flat and then another mechanical, uh, so I... I don't want to say I thought it was over, but um, it was looking unlikely. But um, yeah, I just kept on fighting, kept on fighting. Is uh, your second victory in Basque Country? Yes, yes, after one in Durango. Uh, so obviously I really like this area. Um, I love the, the courses that they set, really tough courses. And the fans are incredible. Like that climb, that was seriously what kept me going up that climb, the fans screaming. It's uh, very, very special, this victory. Yeah, really special. And I... But all my teammates, but particularly Georgia Williams, just absolutely destroyed herself leading into that final climb. So uh, she deserves this as much as I do, and it was, yeah, really awesome race. Oh, that's the moment that Lucy Kennedy delivered the inaugural uh, victory in the Donostia San Sebastian Classico, a race that is set to run and run, a beautiful race and a beautiful success, shrugging off the early puncture difficulty and the uh, uh, man malady to her mechanical situation that followed to take the the win and big uh, first time success in this race and her second win in the Basque Country this year in one day in one day races. And see Kennedy for the all conquering Mitchelton Scott squad has her opportunity to shine and she takes it. Sun is shining over San Sebastian this afternoon. Sun is shining on Lucy Kennedy, who takes the win by 23 seconds from WNT Rotor Pro Cycling's uh, Yannicka Ensing. Roy Ackers gets up for third for CCC Live, ahead of Corsina Patel, Oyarbida, Nan, Hamas, Nielsen, and Vigilia rounds out the top ten.